Hey, what's up guys? Books Nelson here with another video. Today we'll be breaking down and doing a little mini tutorial on this Galaxy Opal Drew Holiday. So Drew is, I believe, going to be available all year. So it doesn't matter when you're seeing this video. If it's 2K24, you should be able to grab it. So the thing about Drew that I want, I got to tell you guys my, and let's get right into the content. I got to tell you guys my experience with Drew. So I, this is on a no money spent account, right? And I need to do the objectives to get bucks assist and point guard assist. So I took Drew online and was really working with him a lot. And I was just so impressed by the card's defense that I absolutely had to cover the card because I think because of Drew's flaws, people might overlook him. But on the court, Drew has so many things going for him that I, I highly recommend. If you do not have two elite point guards, Drew as your backup point guard or even your third as like a lockdown off the bench, I think is a really, really viable option at this point in the cycle in my team. Now, that having been said, Drew's not a perfect card offensively. He has certain limitations, but he's not bad offensively. I actually think he's got a lot of things going for him to make him very good. And let's get into what those things are. So, you know, we like to start out with the flaws on this channel. So I'm going to tell you right away. The number one issue with Drew Holiday above everything else is that jump shot. So is it a bad jump shot? It's not bad because it's very, very makeable if you can get it. The problem is, if you look at the jump shot animation, particularly from behind, right? Uh, and a certain size too, so look at this, right? Okay, so from behind here, when you hold the button, this is what I call a jump scare jump shot, right? You're, he's sitting here in this position, bringing the ball up. His head, especially because of his dreads, completely covers it. And basically, at this point, you got to let it go. There's no point where the ball is above his head and you're looking at the animation. You're waiting for this animation, and as soon as you see it, jump scare! You know, the killer came out the closet. I got to let the jump shot go. And because of the load ups in the game and the different catch animations, you can't just time it. Like you have to really always be super on point to, to see that jumper. Now, from certain angles, it's easier than other angles. And when you get used to it, you can hit. I actually hit most of my jumpers with Drew. I think I only missed two three-pointers in a reasonably long session with Drew. So it is a thing that you can get down but it has to be brought up because take a card like say Oscar Robertson, so much easier to shoot with Oscar because of how high the ball is and how easy it is to read Oscar's um, jumper. Honestly, if Drew had a better upper, I would skyrocket this card, even with the rest of his, I won't say flaws, but like the rest of his lack of ability, I would still have him like firmly in the A tier of the point guards list. I think he is still A tier because his defense is so good. I can't show that to you guys in the, in the breakdown here, but just trust me, this guy defends every position way above his head. He gets stops. And also as a standing dunk guy, that's another thing. Look at those arms, right? It says he has a 6'7 wingspan, which doesn't seem that long, but man, on the court, it feels like his arms are longer than that. You see this standing dunk after standing dunk. So when you talk about quote unquote, undersized point guards, I wouldn't put Drew in that category. I think undersized starts from 6'4 on down. From 6'5 and up, in this game, I think you can play with anybody as long as they have the stats, the tendencies, and the animations to hang. And from a defensive standpoint, I'll tell you what, the only difficulty I had with Drew Holiday was keeping Michael Jordan, Dark Matter Michael Jordan, out of the paint. It might have been 100 overall, Michael Jordan. Same card. Either way, Keeping him off the rim was really hard because he gets really good animations. Other than that, every other defensive assignment Drew excelled in. Uh, so since we started talking about the shooting, I do want to talk about his leaners. So I actually think the leaner, he has normal leaner, but I think the leaner with Drew is significantly easier to hit because the timing is so consistent, right? So if you have this Drew card, I highly recommend. Uh, if you're going to use him, confidently get that leaner game going. Uh, feel good about that leaner game. Very easy cue to hit on the leaners. It's really just the catch and shoot jumpers that are, they fit into that jump scare thing that we're talking about. So, and, and a hop jumper, a normal two, also very good. Very good hop jumper, normal two hop jumper. So honestly, as a moving shot creator, I think Drew's a little slept on by the community because once he gets going, he really can take any shot off the move and you can take that shot with extreme confidence. So, that having been said, let's get into the SIGs. So, he's got Michael Jordan Dribble Style. So, if you're new to this channel, uh, basically the benefits of the Michael Jordan Dribble Style is you have three push crosses. So, this is your 
five o'clock and seven o'clock push cross. This is inferior to the Devin Booker, but still somewhat usable. And then you have your more east to west push cross, right? So it's a very similar animation to the forward push cross where you're pushing at a forward angle and it's just a quick one. So this is, I'm not gonna say better than the Devin Booker, but it's just explosive, right? Really explosive. And then you've got that same push cross moving forward. The same kind of looking animation, very explosive. And the benefit of that is that when you're doing size up dribbles, you can uh, explode in any direction with pretty good confidence. Now, one of the drawbacks of Drew is he has his own size up and you see his own size up has kind of a little load up before it starts. Now, this is his behind the back though. His behind the back is actually pretty good. That behind the back size up, it gives a good space. I would say that the between the legs is solid too. So just stay away from the crossover. The crossover is the one with the big delay. I think if you stay away from the crossover, you're, you're okay with the size ups. Again, it's not the best thing about the card, but I do think he works okay, you know, from that size up dribble style game. Uh, next up, you have the Steph Curry escape. So this is, I think, one of his most important tools because Drew's L2 cancel game is actually quite strong. And I know most people don't know how to L2 cancel, but I think if you're running Drew, it's worth it to learn because what we talked about him getting to those standing dunks and moving shots is much more effective if you have a genuine kill move. And the, the L2 cancel is one of the few non-Jamal Murray kill moves in the game, right? And you can get to that kill move and get to those leaners and hit those shots at a really high clip. And you can also get to the, um, what do you call it? His hop jumper game, as well as his stick dunk game at a high clip if you know how to L2 cancel. I do think it's very much worth it to learn how to L2 cancel with the Curry Escape uh, with Drew Holiday. Speaking of L2 cancels, he has the Allen Iverson behind the back. So this is a very good tool, tool for Drew because if you guys aren't familiar, the bread and butter is basically you explode in one direction, you do a moving dribble, and that gets you to the basket. And what this does is it beats the defense, right? So with the Michael Jordan dribble style, you can explode off of that. And with the Allen Iverson crossover, you can get to it like that. So this is how what people use in five out. The Kobe crossover, the John Wall crossover are the main tools. The reason behind the backs aren't used in Rec and Pro-Am is because the Jamal Murray behind the back is what everyone has. But in my team, you have what the card has and you have to use everything to its best use case. If there was no J Jamal Murray behind the back, I do think that Allen Iverson behind the back would be one of the behind the backs that's used. Uh, I think it would be Halliburton, um, you know, Trey Young, there would be a few of them, but the Allen Iverson gives you a decent mix of a left to right uh, behind the back, as well as a moving behind the back. This is one, it's not elite at either one, but I do think they're both serviceable. And speaking of the left to right behind the back, so if you're going left to right behind the back like this, right, what you need to be able to do is cancel out of it with that Curry escape. Uh, you need to be able to do that because you gotta, if you don't do that, it's so slow you know, uh, that your momentum would stop. But if you do that, if you if you cancel, cancel out of it with that Curry escape, you're good to go. And the way you do that is you just do it again, right? You just do the behind the back twice, and that's what allows you to spam left and right. You see here, it's a really good behind the back. It just has, it's just slow, you know, but the, the space it creates is good. The ability to move out of it is good. The ability to set the opponent is good. It's just a little on the slow side. Does that make it unusable? Absolutely not. Uh, you don't need the fastest dribbles in the game to beat people off the dribble. So you see there, it blends very well with the Michael Jordan dribble style. You see here, I'm missing these standing, these driving dunks. I would definitely give him a driving dunk shoe. Um, he doesn't need any badges, which is great. So being on the no money spent account, I have a renewed respect for cards that don't require resources. Um, and he doesn't require badge resources, but I would give him that driving dunk on the shoe just to make the standing dunks a little easier. That said, in the online environment, I did hit standing dunks. I just like to have that meter be as big as possible. All right, so his breakdown moves, not even gonna show them to you. Kobe Bryant breakdown moves, not really worth anything. Let's look at his moving crossover. So it says he has pro. I recognize that. Let me see whose that is. That looks almost like, that's the same one Julius Irving has, Derek White Bam out of bio. Yeah, I don't know whose that is off the top of my head. Tyrese Halliburton has that same one, but it's all right. It's all right. I think for the bread and butter combo, I like the Allen Iverson behind the back more because of the way it moves you to the side there. But I do think the crossover is somewhat usable for that bread and butter. You just run at the angle, hit the moving crossover move, get to the rim. Very quick, very efficient straight line driving. 
Speaking of straight line driving, I would say don't sleep on his attack cross, right? So the attack cross, you're holding turbo and you're going up forward. Um, I went two, two up forward. There you go. Up forward like so, but you got to let go and run out of it, right? So what happens with that is that blends very well with his hop back. So he's got this hop back. Let's see which hop back is that. That is the Chris Paul. Chris Paul is the probably the second best hot back in the game behind the John Wall. Actually surprised I haven't heard more about this animation because it is very, very good and extremely close to the John Wall, right? So, and it, I gotta compare these two because I think there might be some benefits to the Chris Paul over the John Wall in some cases. But anyway, so let's talk about this snatch back and hot back, right? So the snatch is pretty self-explanatory and we'll look at it with the Allen Iverson comboed up. You see the Allen Iverson just being too slow hurts it a little bit. So you can't do, get into that combo too much, but this is a great way to retreat. And with the Michael Jordan dribble style, you can burst out of it very easily using either push cross as you see here. But also off of this hop back, if you want straight line drive, you can go into the attack cross. And so if people are playing, so here's an important thing. And this is pretty much all of the stuff on the card. So this is like kind of a closing note to some degree. The way people play defense a lot is they want to get onto your ball hand to right stick rip you. And when they're on the ball to right stick rip you, something that goes forward like that is much stronger because it gives you the ability to immediately punish someone trying to get to your ball hand. So if you have something like a hot back that does that and you can get out of that hot back very quickly and avoid the right stick ripper, that's a very, very good tool for the card to have. So closing out his SIGs, uh, moving spin LeBron James, we don't really use spins too much, although I, I do think spins are a little underrated and if the game was out for a longer cycle, we'd probably see more usage of the spins. But as it is right now, I honestly don't know the difference between one spin and another spin. Um, at this point, they all seem to be able to do the same thing. They're all solid in the context that they're used in. Um, but he has Kyrie Irving's moving hesitation. So this is what it looks like on its own. Right, that's the moving hezi. The most important thing about the moving hezi is that you can easily burst out of it. That's the main thing, right? Is that being able to burst out of that moving hezi from any direction and from the behind the back, right? That's what's important. But I will say, moving hezi combined with the Michael Jordan dribble style does give you a nice extra move to add to your arsenal in terms of moving people. So the great thing about this, right? When you do this moving hezi, if you do this moving hezi off of something like a hot back or a snatch back, right? When you do that moving hezi, you get to decide which direction you go next, right? During this animation, you can decide to burst out of it or you can decide to size up in the other direction, or you can even decide to um, behind the back, right? And that ability to make choices allows you to react to what your opponent is doing, which is actually rare in 2K, because in 2K, there's a lot of latency, especially once you're online. So the ability to react to your opponent and moves that allow you to do that is important. And I think he gets that out of that hesitation. So I would count that hesitation amongst his very good moves. So I'll show you guys one more thing that I think the card is pretty good at with this Allen Iverson crossover. And that's basically the, uh, what do you call it? The whoop D into the behind the back directly. Gives you a little bit of a front line option that's not always there. So again, same thing. If they're starting to lean to that ball hand, you can go right the other way and easily get a shot off of them uh, because the whoop D puts you into the running state which allows the normal, so normally standing still and holding behind the back wouldn't do anything. Or even if you held forward, it wouldn't move you with any speed. But with the whoop -dee, that behind the back launches you forward and allows you to get on the rim very quickly and punish defense that's over aggressively moving to your ball hand. And so, and speaking of over aggressively moving to your ball hand, you know, the ability to hop back, the ability to push cross, those things are very useful for Drew. So I was, I had a lot of online success with Drew Holiday. He was a very good card for me. I was quite surprised because from an animation standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, and from a jump shot standpoint, I like Derek White way more. But Drew was so good in terms of the added size, the standing dunks, and the defense that if I'm actually playing in a competitive context, I would use Drew over Derek White and just spend time with Drew's jumper to just close the gap between him and Derek White. I do like both cards. But my honest opinion, as much as I do love Derek White, I think Derek White's a great card, I would choose Drew Holiday. And for that reason, I wanted to show this card to you guys, show you what I got out of him, let you know about my experience, and hopefully help.
help you to get more out of Drew Holiday than him just being a 3 and D card and a straight-up rim runner. I do think he can be, I would say, a third playmaker on your team. But, I, but you know, opportunistically, Drew can get you buckets. And triple threat, Drew's totally fine in triple threat. Totally fine to run a point guard and triple threat if, for whatever reason, you're not running Shea. Or if, like I had to, you had to do some objectives, right? So those objectives were pretty easy and straightforward with Drew. He played super great for me. Guys, cannot thank you enough for the support you've shown to this channel as of the, this recording. We are less than 30 subs away from 1,000. I cannot believe it. You guys have all been amazing. Comment section has been on fire. Um, and yeah, thanks for the support. Please like and subscribe if you have not already. Let's keep elevating the conversation. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.